will be masked as more than words can say. Our memories are all that's left to hold as we get ready for this. One last one for the road. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please rock the traditional ringing of the bell in tribute to the fabulous reaper, Terry. to take on Fritz and Steele in the first match on the fabulous Freebird Terry Bam Bam Gordy Tribute event. One event is going to be six-man tag team match. Tennessee Stud, Ron Fuller teams with Mr. Bad Lamone, the Bullet and Scott Armstrong to face Mr. Perfect, Jerry Stubbs. Tennessee Stud, Robert Ford, Jimmy Gordon as the man locked in. D'Angelo pulled back into the corner. Referee now calling for the break. Count one, count of two. Finally, Steele breaks it up. Apparently in that uh, bull back into the corner, uh, Chris can still pull the hair of River D'Angelo. Right now, referee asked to steal, of course, still denying that he ever did. Of course, from our vantage point, we could not see if he actually had the hair or not as the wrestlers now circle each other. Once again, size each other up, locked in again, collar and elbow. D'Angelo now forces the man back into the corner. Referee again caught for the break. Excellent move right there by Steele as he covered up in, uh, in, in trying to defend himself against a possible attack by D'Angelo again. And now Steele complaining about a hair pull. And of course, I don't understand why he would be doing this. He has no hair to pull. Well, I didn't see a hair pull, but that does not mean that River D'Angelo did not pull his hair. But we did not see it. And now River D'Angelo asking the fans something. And here we go. Let's see if the man will lock back up and get to action. And now D'Angelo goes in the back of the corner, comes up, gigantic knee lift, puts the man down on the canvas again. D'Angelo now moving back in, in control of the situation at this time. Side headlock, Steele pulls the man back on the corner again, shoots him off, comes up with a giant shoulder block. D'Angelo up and over, comes up, leapfrog by Steele. Steele tries for a hip toss, blocked, blocked again. Steele comes up, up and over, and now starts gigantic. Close line again, D'Angelo in control of the match. Right now, D'Angelo making a mistake right there by not staying on the man as he is in control of the match. You should always stay on the man, and River D'Angelo did not get on the man, but he goes up with a beautiful snap suplex on Christian Steele. But once again, he should be going for the pin, and he does not, but he comes back with a big elbow on Christian Steele's back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Steele in trouble at this point. Needs to mount some kind of offensive here. As he goes with the snapmare takedown, D'Angelo back into the ropes, comes back, snaps the neck back. As D'Angelo continues his onslaught here tonight at Bow Auditorium against Christian Steele. That had to put some, some really strain on the vertebrae. He rolls, rolls it up, one, two. He only gets the two count. Christian Steele kicks out. D'Angelo now. Takes the man, twists the arm, puts the pressure on the arm. Again, another twist. Referee right there asking now. Steele makes a turn and reverses it on D'Angelo. Well, you see the referee asking River D'Angelo if you'd like to give up. Notice how, notice how Steele has that wrist just crimped up there, putting all the pressure on the arm. Again, now putting even more pressure as D'Angelo goes down to his knees. If I was right now, if I was Christian Steele, I would take the man down, put my weight on that arm, keep him, keep my weight on him and try to bring the man down now. Side headlock. 
by Christian Steele. Well, Christian Steele got the headlock on River D'Angelo. The referee is asking River D'Angelo if he'd like to give up. He can give up at any time during this match. I still think that Mr. Steele needs to take D'Angelo to the mat. Steele putting his weight, all of his weight on him, trying to wear him down. It's D'Angelo now. Comes up. Tremendous move by Steele. Oh, now Steele trying to, now he's got a leg. D'Angelo's got that leg. What is it? Ooh. The Vought kick puts D'Angelo right down to the canvas, and I think right there is a classic example. D'Angelo had the man, and of course he stalled there for just a second, allowing Christian Steele with a tremendous move, and now Steele wasting time. He should go after the man right there. Well, he should have pinned the man right after he gave the Savant kick to River D'Angelo, but that is inexperience. He's been wrestling professionally for about two years. That is inexperience, and well, now he comes up, he picks the man up. It looks like he's going for a suplex. Tremendous, tremendous standing suplex right here coming up. No, no, he turns it right around and into a power slam. Oh no, what's going on here? Number four. four. Jimmy Gold just coming to the ring and kicked Christian Steele. Now what, what could possibly be Robert Fuller and Jimmy Gold's motivation for this? As Robert Fuller, Jimmy Gold and now setting D'Angelo for the power driver. Oh my. Robert Fuller now putting the boots right to Christian Steele. Apparently here to send a message to Ron Fuller, the Bullet, and Scott Armstrong later in the night. They will be in a six-man Southern Street fight. Christian Steele up and over out of the ring. Well, there you see the ring announcer saying it's a, a double disqualification. Robert Fuller has a few words. Let's hear him. Right there, sending a message, a clear message to the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller, the Bullet, and Scott Armstrong. And later tonight, the Southern Street Fight, as Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden, Jerry Stubbs faces the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller, the Bullet, and Scott Armstrong here at the tribute to Terry Bam Bam Gordy. That will be a match worth seeing here this evening. And for the first time in a long time, the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller, will be in the ring. Well, here we go. Buzz, the rodeo clown to take on the Demon Master. The second match on the Freebird Terry Bam Bam Gordy tribute event here in Birmingham, Alabama, the Bout Wall Auditorium. Still to come on this video tape, you'll see a whole lot more great wrestling action. There you see Buzz, the rodeo clown. You talk about a man that I would not want to be here tonight. That is Buzz, the rodeo clown, because he's about to face the most devastating man at 310 pounds, the Demon Master. He is one of the most awesome looking wrestlers you'll ever see. And here in just a moment, you're going to find out this is exactly what I'm talking about. 310 pounds from the dark side, Demon Master. He is one the Neiman of a man. And we're going to see him go against Buzz the Rodeo Clown in just a few moments. But right now, he is heading his way down to the ring. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. If this cannot be one of the most intimidating sights, having to stand across the ring at 310 pounds with that heading your way, a skull with a big gigantic flame right there. Tremendous. Right now, Buzz, the rodeo clown, I bet he'd like to go run home or something right now. Back to the rodeo. He would probably be right now, would rather be uh, running those bulls around the uh, rodeo instead of being going against the Demon Master because this man is an impressive individual. 310 pounds and is a great professional wrestler. You see the fans around ringside looking at this man. They don't know what to think of the Demon Master. Right now, Demon Master getting ready. And right here, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to see something incredible, right? Look at that. Look at that. And if I was buzzed and rodeo play on the referee and the mouser, I would get out of the ring, too. The Demon Master right here at Bowler Auditorium. And again, tremendous. You have to think about it. What kind of psychological advantage does this put the Demon Master over uh, the rodeo class? 
It has, it has to get on the rodeo clown's mind. He's got to be thinking, well, what if this man during the match could do this to me and blow this fire in my face? It has to be a great thinking on his part, but I believe Buzz the Rodeo Clown is a professional, but professionally wrestling, I think, about three years now, so he has the ability to defeat the Demon Act. Well, that will remain to be seen here at Battle Auditorium. Right now, I'm going to put all my money on the Demon Master, 310 pounds. But right now, the Buzz, the uh, Rodeo Clown, taking it to the Demon Master, tries for a body slam. That's 310 pounds. He's not, oh, and, and Demon Master comes back. Tremendous right hands and continues to pound. Buzz, the Rodeo Clown, picks him up. Full body slam to the canvas. That's how it's done, Buzz, right there. We well, did it with ease, but you're talking 310 pounds. Buzz, the Rodeo Clown, I believe, probably came in at the 240, 250 mark. Tremendous right there, right hand. Demon Master now puts the man into the ropes, comes up, tried for a clothesline reversal. Buzz the Rodeo Clown now with the right hands, and you have to give it a buzz. He has taken it to Demon, Demon Master here at Bowell. Well, he goes for the second rope with a big axe handle on the hand of Demon Master, but it does not put the Demon Master down. He comes in a big foot by the Demon Master on Buzz the Rodeo Clown. Tremendous, tremendous power right there of the Demon Master as he sizes up the Rodeo Clown right now, goes in, puts the man down. Back to the ropes, Shitsy Man comes up, picks him up, Spine Buster, right here at Bowell, count of one, count of, only a count well, of two at that time. You have to give it to Buzz the Rodeo Clown, he kicked out of that. There we see, he whips him in, he drops down, <laughs> look at that, he's running him like a ball. Apparently he's had a rodeo flashback right there. And of course, Buzz is in control now. He's got the man down on the mat right there. That's exactly where he needs to be the master here tonight. Yeah, you, you don't want him to be standing. You want to keep him to the mat. When you have a man 310 pounds, you want to keep him to the mat. Exactly, exactly. And Buzz is right now in control of this match. Puts the man 310 pound man into the rope. Comes up with a clothesline down on the canvas. The rodeo clown now drives the knee into the chest. Count of one, only a count of two, and again, I think that Buzz needs to hook that leg. He's going to have to hook that leg. He's going to take all the advantage he needs to on the Demon Master if he's going to be successful in this match. Right now, reverted to some underhanded tactics as he's choking Demon Master on the second rope. Referee now calling for the break. Well, he breaks it up because he couldn't be disqualified if he keeps on it with what He comes off and a big uh, leg on the top of... Now, that means his throat is going right over that rope, which is a very dangerous maneuver. I have to be honest with you. I really didn't think Buzz was going to be putting up this kind of offense in the match against the Demon Master, and he's got him in the corner right now just pounding. Well, the Rodeo Clown has done very well in this match. I am surprised as well. There he goes, he whips him in, a big reversal. He goes into the rope. He comes after a big elbow by Buzz the Rodeo Clown. Mistake by the Demon Master Rodeo Clown was right on again, trying to ride him like a bull again. And oh my, Demon Master just reached up, just, just powered him off his back. Well, that shows the 310 pounds. It shows the power this man has. The Demon Master 310 for the dark side comes back with a big punch, and it brings the Buzz the Rodeo Clown down to the mat, and now referee one. Just barely, one. just barely got out of that one. And you know, the, the wearing down of the demon match that we're talking about, 310 pounds Buzz has to handle in this match. Well, it looks like, you know, if it went over maybe the 10 to 15 minute mark, that probably Buzz the Rodeo Clown would have the advantage. Because when you're 310 pounds, you run out of steam very fast. Now the Demon Master whips it into the ropes, comes off, gigantic clothesline. Not too many more of those is Buzz going to be able to take in this one. Well, you know, I didn't think he would last this long with the man, but he has lasted very long. He has done very well with the Demon Master, so you have to give him credit. And you never know, he could come up and win this match. Oh, chopped down across the chest again. Buzz in trouble here at Boutwell right now as the Demon Master in control. Whips the man into the ropes, comes off big gigantic foot again. De and Demon Master in control now goes back into the ropes. Oh, 310 pounds down across the back of the net. Again, a pin. Only a count. He just barely gets out again. Buzz in trouble here at Boutwell on a turn as the Demon Master in control at this time. Where you see Buzz, he has really put up a fight against the Demon Master. The Demon Master goes to the second rope. Oh, no. No, that's 310 pounds. That's 310 pounds. If he hits this one, this is going to be all over. And now, ooh. 
Bell's got that foot up. Bell's got that foot up out of desperation, apparently, right here in Bowell Auditorium. Now, he thinks he's getting victory. It looks like he may be going to the top rope. This could be a mistake. This could be a mistake with a big man, 310 pounds. Let's see what happens here. Buzz is now up. Oh, my. Caught him right in the abdomen right there. Buzz is in trouble right now. Oh, my. He's got him set. He's got him set. Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the choke slam right there in Bowell. The Demon Master in control. Now for the cover. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. It's all over. The Demon Master. Very impressive with the choke slam on Buzz the Rodeo Clown here in Bowell. But you have to give it to Buzz. He gave it his all against the 310 pounder. This is indeed going to be a great contest. Kenny Devine, a great professional wrestler. I don't know about a lot about Robbie Ray, but I've heard great things about her. So let's see what's going to happen in this event. Well, you have to know that being a champion, she has to be a tremendous athlete. And now Kenny Devine on the opposite side. She, uh, Robbie Rage is the one that this defeated Candy Devine to become a champion, UWA. and now this is the ladies return match for the UWA Ladies and Championship here at Bowell Auditorium, the tribute to Freebird Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Well, let's go hear the introductions of this match. So there we heard the introductions. You heard the music provided by the Flames. They did a great job, the Flames, as taking care of all the music for tonight's tribute to Terry Bam Bam Gordy. We're going to see Kenny Devine take on Robbie Rage. The ladies' championship is on the line. Well, the fans are really ready for this one. They are looking on. Ready to see if Kenny Devine has it what it takes to once again become the UWA ladies' champion. Definitely right now checking over both the competitors. I'm sure that maybe that's the first time that he's seen it as a, a professional wrestling referee. And well, apparently maybe getting fresh with Robbie Ray right there in the corner. Well, he was. She did push him away, so I don't know what that was all about. The referee calls for the bell, so we're ready for action. The ladies, champions of all the line. We're going to see Candy Line and Robbie Ray picks her up and gives her an arm drag. Well, apparently right there in the arm drag, Candy and mine pull the tights or as Robbie Rage is complaining right here. I didn't see it. I did not see any uh, pulling of the tights. We'll just have to find out. And maybe we'll hit it again. There we go. There is another arm dragged by Candy Devine. All right. Now that time I didn't see a thing. I did not see Candy Devine pull the tights right there at all from, from our candy right here. Well, this indeed, Robbie Rage is using some warfare on Candy Devine. Trying to make her upset, trying to make her mad, saying she's pulling her tights and pulling her trunks. And look, well, well, right there, pulling her right there. Robbie well, just snatched her up, two handfuls right there and threw Candy Divine down. Candy Divine comes back, picks her up, big forearm down across the back. Well, that'll ring your head right there. That'll give you some color violence, flower ears, if nothing will. Or if I can say it, it'll give you some bad ears. There you see Kenny Devine hooking the arm. <laughs> Referee asking Robbie Rage, you have to give up. He's arguing about something. Something right there. Robbie Rage tried to pull the hair to try to take advantage. Candy Vine held on, held on to the arm bar as the referee right there asking Robbie Rage if she's ready to give it up. Of course, I, I would say not, being that this is the most important match of both of these uh, women's careers. Well, Candy Devine has been wrestling professionally for many, many years. She has held numerous uh, ladies championships throughout the country, throughout the world. She has wrestled against the fabulous Mula, one of the greatest lady wrestlers of all time. There you see who reverses it and to an arm lock. 
continue the pressure on Roddy Ray, just can't get back in control of this match. The wrestling fans looking on here at Bowell Auditorium at this tremendous match, watching these two women battle for the UWA Ladies Championship aside headlocked by Robbie Rage as she continues to maintain take control in this match. Well, still to come, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to see the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony in the nightmare. Penny Wayne, go against Michael, PSA, and Ray Gordy. Nature Boy Buddy Landale in what has been known as his final match here tonight at the tribute to Terry Bam Bam Gordy against Tommy Wildfire Rich. That to come later on as the head scissors are applied to Robbie Ray's Candy Divine well in control right here in this match. The referee asking Robbie Ray if she'd like to give it up. He breaks it up. <laughs> Apparently, Robbie Rage bit the inner thigh of Candy Devine. Well, I was wondering why she jumped up real fast. And uh, Candy Devine's a little upset about it. Goes over and starts just pounding on Robbie Rage. Full now, scoops her up, full slam. Goes for the pin, count of one, count of two. Is that a three? Is that a three? No. Candy Devine on the referee. Robbie Rage now has to carry the by the referee. A sandwich between both brothers. They're rolling around. The referee, <laughs> oh my, oh my, give the referee a cigarette. I'll tell you what, that was every man in the uh, burning half out one on a tram is in here for the referee right now. Hey, the fight is all over the referee right now, though. Did not appreciate that at all. I wonder if the referee's going to give them both flowers. Well, you never know, but Kane Devine don't seem too happy about it. We'll just find out later on. See what's going to happen on Kenny Devine versus Robbie Rage. The ladies' title is on the line. Now Robbie Rage trying to put her hand out. Now, now, would you shake a person's hand that just bit you? I mean, would you check a man hurt and just bit you by the hair? I don't think so. I don't think Kenny Devine's going to Kenny Devine's going to fall for that here tonight. Here at Bowell Auditorium during this UWA Ladies Championship match. Well, Penny, oh no, she was like, well, she did fall for that well, one. She did fall for oh, it. Oh my. And now Robbie Rage is took over, picks Danny Devine up, body slam. Goes for the band, one, two, and she kicks out of the, after the two count. Again, got it, she's got it, she's got to hook that leg, she's got to hook that leg to hold Kenny Devine down. The champion now in control of the match, pulls uh, Kenny Devine in the back. Forearm smash across the chest, again across the chest, as Roddy Rage continues, Ripley blocks it that time, and again continues the onslaught in the corner, reversal, now, chops, chops to Roddy Rage from Kane Devine. Well, the referee is asking Kane Devine to get off of Roddy Rage, she is not doing it, she just built her across, all the way across to the other side of the ring. Kenny Devine has took over on Robbie Rage, and she is pounding her good. Now picks her up. Looks like maybe for a giant swing. No, catapults her across the ring. <laughs> Kenny Devine in control now. As she goes in, grabs her by the legs again. Picks her up, another catapult across the ring. And Robbie Rage in trouble here at Bowler Auditorium. Well, there we see, she's gonna pick her up. It looks like she's gonna go for a Boston Crab. Has that Boston Crab referee right there, asking her if she wants to give it up. Just put tremendous pain, tremendous pain on the back. Reversal now. On the count of two, and again, another reversal. Kenny Devine now, no, a kick out by Robbie Rage. Well, Robbie Rage and Kenny Devine, they've been going for maybe 10 minutes now, and they have been going to the nail. She whips her into the rope, comes back with a double chop. Kane Devine winded after this when both ladies, both women trying their best to become or to hold on to that championship. Again, Kane Devine in control of this match as she moves back in on Robbie Rage. Now Kane Devine looks like she's going to pick her up for a body slam. Slams her hard to the mat. Kane Devine now moving up. Goes to the first row, now up to the second. This could be a major mistake right here as we saw it. Oh, it is. It is Robbie Rage moving out of the way as she tried to splash in the second rope. Rage in control right now. Grabs a big handful of hair of Kane Devine, yanks her up off the mat. Now pulls her back into the rope. The whip across, comes across, tries. Sun oh, sunset flip right there. Count of one, two, three, and we have a new champion. We have a new champion in Candy Devine. She has just won back the ladies' heavyweight championship of the world. And this is one great night for Candy Devine. Once again, the UWA Women's Champion, Candy Devine.
pulls it out here tonight at Bowell Auditorium. She will always remember this night in Bowell. Gentlemen, we are getting ready for one of the most awaited matches this here tonight as one half of the Rock and Roll Express, Robert Gibson, will face one half of the Midnight Express, beautiful Bobby Eaton. What history between these two men over and over again over the World Tag Team Championship, over the Mid-South Tag Team Championship. They have battled all over the world, all over the United States, and tonight it's one-on-one -on -one Robert Gibson and beautiful Bobby Eaton here at Bowell Auditorium, the tribute to Terry Bam Bam Gordon. And this is a feud that started back in 1983. This feud went from Mid-South Wrestling in Louisiana and went to the National Wrestling Alliance. Robert Fuller is coming out. Let's see what Robert Fuller has to say. You know, you, you have to wonder what is the, the relationship between Robert Fuller and Robert Gibson or Robert Fuller Jr. What is the control? What does Robert Fuller have on Robert Gibson? That would, this, this is completely, obviously, uh, a farce on the behalf of Robert Fuller. We, I don't understand exactly what it is. Apparently a humiliation for Robert Gibson. Uh, exactly what is transpiring, what is going on uh, between uh, in that camp of Robert Fuller and Robert Fuller Jr. or AKA Robert Gibson. I don't know, but right now you hear Sweet Home Alabama and beautiful Bobby Eaton from Huntsville, Alabama come to the ring. This is certainly a change of pace for both men. This time on opposite sides, really. Uh, Bobby Eaton cheered in Birmingham tonight, facing Robert Gibson in, the, in, in, in years past, and it's in the opposite way. A heinous act to the Midnight Express against the Rock and Roll Express, and the tremendous rivalry that has taken place between uh, these two teams, and now it's come down one on one. Robert Gibson, beautiful Bobby. It's not going to be anybody else on the outside of the ring. It's just going to be one on one here tonight, Karen Boutwell. Well, Bobby Eaton has no Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette, who was with Bobby Eaton and Dennis Condry and Stan Lane for many years. Tonight, Bobby Eaton by himself. Bobby Eaton will have to go in that ring and go against Robert Gibson and beat him on his own, not with anyone's help. The kind of wonder in both these men's minds are they in the match? Are they going to reach out for that corner and then there'll be no Dennis Condry or Stan Lane or there'll be no Ricky Morton there to make that tag? How will that be different in this match? How will that make a difference in this match? Well, I think it'll, I think it'll, it'll change a lot of things in our minds. Maybe we'll see it. Maybe we'll see the guys go over and make, try to make a tag or, or try to see if a tag team partner's there. We'll see during the match. We'll see how it progresses and how Bobby Eaton and Robert Gibson do without tag team partners. Have you noticed how cautious both of these men are? I mean, they know each other so well, and right now, taking their time, not rushing because they understand what, what's at stake right here. One mistake, and that could be the end of this match. Lock in his collar and elbow. Robert Gibson now pulled back in the road by Bobby Eaton. Referee now calling no. Now Robert Gibson pushes the man off. Bobby Eaton back into the other corner. Right now, Robert Gibson has, in fact, weighed just a little bit more than he did back then. Well, you know, I think I think one thing you got to think of too. Bobby Eaton has to think this. He has to think, what is Robert Fuller? What is that going about? Does he have to worry about Robert Fuller during this match? Does he have to worry about whether or not he will come out and interfere in this match? He doesn't know. Maybe that's what Robert Fuller wants. Maybe he wants to use psychological warfare. Maybe that's what Robert Gibson wants to use. Trying to get the edge. And of course, you know, Robert Fuller, Robert Fuller Jr., Robert Gibson, now looking at any advantage possible because we're talking about two tremendous and the season athletes right here. Robert Gibson, World Tag Team Champion, Smoky Mountain Tag Team Champions. I mean, the list goes on and on of the credentials of Robert Gibson and beautiful Bobby. What can you say there? Former World Television Champion, Mid-America Champion. I mean, you think about it. I mean, this man right here, wrestled at Bowell Auditorium back in the days of Nick Dulles, was a champion at that time, tag team champion and single champion back then. 
Well, I think Bobby Eaton, right now, I think he's, he's arguing about uh, he did not pull Robert Gibson's hair. So that's something that new that we're seeing from Robert Gibson, too. He's using this this warfare on him. He's using it. He's pulled my hair. He's done all this. Something right. that Robert Gibson never done right. throughout his years in the wrestling. That, I think that is the influence of one Robert Fuller. And I, I, I certainly like to get us to the bottom of this relationship between Robert Ford Jr., Robert Gibson, and Robert Ford. Well, we're seeing that we're calling Robert Gibson. Robert Gibson throughout the whole match. We may make Robert Fuller mad. He may come out here and take it out on us. So we might want to start calling him Robert Fuller Jr. Uh, what, well, whatever. Whatever. Maybe we just call him Rock and Roll Express. Well, he has not argued about that, so maybe that'll be all right. Reversal of the hit toss, puts Bobby Eaton down, comes up, flying head scissors, Bobby Eaton in trouble right here. Tremendous, tremendous flying head scissors from uh, Robert Fuller Jr., Robert Gibson, here tonight. Beautiful Bobby Eaton in trouble in the corner right now as he gets, comes back up, complaining to the referee about a hair pull to referee Mike Mitchell. I didn't see a hair pull, but that didn't mean that didn't happen. Mike Mitchell is definitely going to ask uh, Robert Gibson uh, if he did uh, pull the hair. That's, that's Robert Fuller Jr. Robert Fuller Jr. Robert Fuller Jr. I forgot about that. I don't want to make Robert Fuller mad, but it's, it's not. That's not. But we've already had Robert Fuller Jr. go and crash another match. We don't need to come out here and crash the broadcast booth. No, we surely don't want to do that. He's he's, he's very upset. He's very upset if you call him Robert Gibson. So let's that's, try that's our best. I'm wondering what, what is this this relationship? Why is Robert Fuller so? So obsessed with making this man go under the, the, the title of Robert Fuller Jr. I, I just don't understand. I mean, he is a former NWA World Tag Team Champion. He has held that title maybe on six different occasions. You don't. It does not make any sense. It doesn't make any sense why Robert uh, Gibson is doing this. It, it does not make any sense. And maybe throughout, maybe sometime we'll find out what it's all about. People are Bobby Eaton, yeah, yeah, that's right. Bobby Eaton tried for a right hand that time. And we know what a stinging right hand. Ooh, there it is. That stinging right hand from beautiful Bobby. And now Bobby Eaton in control of this match. And again, another one puts Robert Gibson down to the canvas. Robert Gibson now going to the outside of the ring. Bobby Eaton right after him, right here. No, the referee stopped him as he, uh, before he started out. Well, I think the referee told him, you get out there, I'll have to disqualify you. So Bobby Eaton decided just to stay inside the ring. Did not want to get it disqualified. He would like to get a win over Robert Gibson. This is the, the tribute to Freebird Terry Van Bam Gordy. This show means a lot. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a kind of a situation he would like to win the match. Now, he's not letting Robert Gibson back into the ring. Tremendous now in this historic match, historic night and tribute right here and now. Beautiful Bobby now with another right hand on the outside of the ring. Robert Gibson trying to get back into the ring again. And now, beautiful Bobby, that, that, that knee streak. And now Robert Gibson now pulls the leg. Beautiful Bobby now it's on the outside of the ring. Ooh, runs his head right into the uh, ring post on the outside as Robert Gibson taking control of this match on the outside of the ring. Again, another right hand on the outside. Oh my, hip toss on the concrete floor. There's no padding out there. This, is, this isn't this is like what you see sometimes. There's no padding out there on that world of turn. That is concrete as Robert Gibson has taken it to beautiful Bobby out on the floor. And I mean, he is pounding him. Well, referee Mike Mitchell is continuously telling him to get in the ring. Get in the ring. Russell in the ring. But Robert Gibson is not listening to whatever Mike Mitchell says. Again, the referee. again, the influence of one Robert Fuller. I have no doubt about that. As Robert Gibson now goes full head of hair right there and runs his head right into the ring post again. I mean, that makes it about the third time right into that ring post here tonight as Robert Gibson continues the onslaught to beautiful Bobby Eaton. And now as he pounds him on the outside, Ripley, on the outside, counting him now as Robert Gibson or Robert Ford Jr. And Bobby Eaton falls back out to the concrete. Well, you can see that Robert Gibson has got this mean streak in him. He's got this aggression in him that uh, we've not seen. He's out there kicking Bobby Eaton on the outside of the, the, the floor. No, no, no. Oh, my. Right in the mouth that time. Right in the mouth. As he now runs the man into the barricades on the outside of the ring. Referee Mike Mitchell trying to tell him, get back in the ring. And, of course, he cannot win this match on the outside. He's got a pinning in the ring. Well, uh, of course, now, apparently he hurt me that time because now beautiful Bobby now thrown back into the ring. Robert Gibson, I believe, feels that he has this one. He feels it. No. 
Bobby Eaton comes back with a right hand shot right into the abdomen of Robert Gibson. Robert Gibson now with Bobby Eaton into the rope. Comes off swinging neck breaker. Swinging neck breaker by beautiful Bobby. And Robert Gibson rolls out of the floor. Tremendous move right there as Bobby Eaton with that tremendous swinging neck breaker puts Robert Fuller, uh, Robert Ford Jr. on the outside of the ring. Robert Gibson on the outside of the ring right now. Referee now trying to stop him. Ooh. Right there now, got a pin all over the ropes. He was, his feet were all over the ropes and got the three count. Again, more of the influence of one Robert Fuller. Robert Fuller, Robert Gibson, should I say, would have never had accepted a win like that. Right there, ladies and gentlemen, feet all over the ropes. Beautiful Bobby Eaton is the uh, loser in this one as Robert Fuller Jr. wins. Here we go, United States Heavyweight Championship on the line. Jimmy Golden takes on the Honky Talk Man, Wayne Ferris, for the United States Heavyweight Championship. This match should be tremendous. Let's go right now to the introductions to this match. This is for the United States Heavyweight Championship, scheduled for one fall with a 60-minute time limit. Introducing first the challenger from Montgomery, Alabama, weighing 270 pounds. Well, there we are, the introduction to this United States Heavyweight Championship match. Donkey Talk Man, Wayne Ferris, to take on Jimmy Golden. Let's remember, Jimmy Golden has guaranteed that tonight, right here at the tribute to Freebird Terry Bam Bam Gordy, he gains the United States Heavyweight Championship from the Honky Talk Man. Well, the Honky Talk Man, former Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, so he is no stranger to tag team, even a tag team championship with Greg the Hammer Valentine. Uh, they're, they're the team of Rhythm and Blue Blues. And now we're getting ready for this one. United States Championship on the line with Jimmy Golden. And of course, tonight, Wayne Ferris, the Honky Talk Man, finds himself tonight with the crowd behind him. Normally, he does not have that. And of course, that's because of the heinous acts that Jimmy Golden has perpetrated over the past few years uh, here in this area. Jimmy Golden, one of the most devious and uh, devastating wrestlers to come down uh, in a long, long time. And right now, Jimmy Golden locked in, power and elbow to the Honky Talk Man, drives him back in the corner. Ooh, right hand. Honky Talk Man retaliates, and Jimmy Golden goes back, picks him up, full slam. Jimmy Golden to the car, uh, to the canvas again. Well, there you see, it picks up Jimmy Golden right now. Ask the fans if he'd like to hit him one, and it looks like he's going to do it. He gives it a big ride to Jimmy Golden. Jimmy Golden goes outside the ring. You know, Jimmy Golden is no stranger to championships as well. He's held every regional championship today, so he's no stranger to title. And just last year, he won the USA Heavyweight Championship, and tonight he wants to add the United States Championship, which the Robert Fuller and the Stead State will be very happy to add that to their influence in the uh, uh, Wrestle Incorporated area. Well, let's remember, he cannot win it on the outside of the ring. He's going to have to get back in the ring. Get up here, Jimmy Golden. I'm going to beat the hell out of you. Such, such language. Well, I think he's such, wanting Jimmy Golden to get such, in the ring. Such language. Well, yeah, but still, he wants him to get in the ring. He wants to be able to defeat Jimmy Golden. Yeah. So, yes, he may have used some language. Maybe he shouldn't have used, but he's telling them, get in the ring. Let's get it on. Let's make the people see a championship match. They cannot see a championship match with Jimmy Golden sitting on the outside of the ring. The Hunger Kong man now asking the fans if he should shake hands with Jimmy Golden. Those fans saying absolutely not. He does. Honky Tonk Man tried for a boot, and now Jimmy Golden retaliates with his own kick. And now a right hand that puts the Honky Tonk Man to the canvas. Jimmy Golden now in control, now looking at the face. Referee Roy George right there asking, flipping it. 
Finally he does. A hockey talk man is down into on the second rope as Jimmy Golden goes after full arm drag twist right there. Jimmy Golden now going after the wrist. What, what is he doing? It looks like he's untying or undoing the tape on the wrist of the Honky Tonk Man. Honky Tonk Man now down on the canvas. Jimmy Golden now continues to attack on the Honky Tonk Man. Now wrapping, it looks like he's wrapping that tape on uh, the bottom rope, tying the hand of the Honky Tonk Man to the bottom rope. Well, you said you told me that Jimmy Golden can do some very devious things, and this this shows that's exactly example. what he can do. That's an example right here as Jimmy Golden continues to attack, puts the foot right down, put it right as all of his weight down on the floor of the Honky Tonk Man. Referee Ward George on Jimmy Golden. The Honky Tonk Man in trouble right here. The referee, I don't think, even notices that the Honky Tonk Man is all tied up with his own taste on the bottom rope as Jimmy Golden continues to attack and now choking the man right here. Well, I don't think the Honky Tonk Man, I don't believe this is a bad place for the Honky Tonk Man. This, he is in trouble right now. The referee does not even know it. He is in trouble. But He's inflicting damage. I mean, this is this is damage you probably can't even come out of. And now finally the referee unties a Honky Tonk Man as Jimmy Golden continues the attack. And he is after the United States Championship and the Honky Tonk Man is in trouble right now. Well, the Honky Tonk Man, that was something that's... Uh to have your to have your arm tied, you can't move, you can't you can't get away. That was bad for the honky talk man. Now Jimmy Golden in control right here. Flying and now finally grabs a hold in a single leg Boston crab. Jimmy Golden has a hold of top rope. Jimmy Golden has a top hold of that top rope. Tremendous pressure on the Honky Tonk Man. Finally, referee Roy George catches it, but apparently again, Jimmy Golden used the, used the, the, the tape, now used the rope to inflict damage on the Honky Tonk Man. Tremendous strategy right here tonight by Jimmy Golden. Well, Jimmy Golden shouldn't overlook the Honky Tonk Man. The Honky Tonk Man has done, he just throws, wait a minute, he just throws the Honky Tonk Man on the outside of the ring. Now, Jimmy Golden continues now, stalking the man on the outside. Ooh. I, just a, I think that was just an open hand slap right to the face of the Honky Tonk Man and rams him into the table at ringside. There you see the United States Championship uh, belt on the table, the, the belt that they're battling for right here. And now a reversal. Now the Honky Tonk Man with right hands. Another one to Jimmy Golden. As now Jimmy Golden now rams into the table at ringside. Jimmy Golden's on the floor. Well, I think he had it coming. He had it coming. He gave that what he gave to uh, Honky Tonk Man. Honky Tonk Man is given right back to him, and he deserves it because he has done everything in the match. But don't forget the Honky Tonk Man has done some devious things himself. So now payback is going to come by Honky Tonk Man. Now the Honky Tonk Man, right hands and a headlock. And again, Jimmy Golden down to the canvas as referee Roy George tries to get the men to go back into the ring. Honky Tonk Man grabs a two handfuls of hair and now puts... Jimmy Golden back in the ring. Honky Tonk Man moves back in. Jimmy Golden right in the middle of the ring. Honky Tonk Man ready to go. Now, kicks him into the stomach right there. Another one. Honky Tonk Man now pulls the man back into the canvas or into the ropes and now whips him over. Sleeper hold by the Honky Tonk Man. Well, there you see right now, this could be the end for Jimmy Golden. He could be going down right now. The sleeper hold. Jimmy Golden, oh, snatch the referee right into the Honky Tonk Man. The referee is down. Honky Tonk Man holds on to that sleeper hold. And Jimmy Golden now back up. He is back up as the Honky Tonk Man holds on to that sleeper hold. Now it's uh, down to now. Jimmy Golden, Robert Fuller pulling the leg on the outside of the ring. Did you see that? Robert Fuller pulling the leg. But it, it, he did not, it did not help. Jimmy Golden, the Honky Tonk Man, powered out of it, so it did not help. It did not change. He holds change. on to that sleeper. He's holding on to the now back into the sleeper hole. Jimmy Golden in trouble right here as referee Ward George goes down again. On the outside of the ring. Robert Fuller now coming to the ring. There's Robert Fuller Jr., Robert Gibson. And now they're attacking as the referee is out. He is not seeing this. Robert Fuller, Robert Fuller Jr. now picks the man up. Double atomic drop. Double atomic drop. Now uh, Robert Gibson, Robert Fuller Jr. rather, now putting Jimmy Golden over uh, on top of the uh, fallen hockey talk man. Now both referees, both referees in the ring. Count of one, count of two, count of three. We have a new United States heavyweight champion of the form of Jimmy Golden, but with help, he had Robert United Fuller Jr. Jr. He was Robert definitely Fuller. robbed champion. here tonight by Jimmy the Stud Stable. Golden. Robert Fuller, Robert Fuller Jr., Jimmy Golden, but the guarantee has come to be 
Jimmy Golden is now the United States heavyweight champion with the help of Robert Fuller and Robert Fuller Jr. Well, he said it, but look at this, the Pocket Dog Man just hit Robert Fuller Jr. And they're going to leave. It looks like they're going to leave, but we do have a new United States heavyweight champion and Jimmy Golden. Tremendous match. Honky Talk Man may be down, will not be out, and this is not the last time we're going to be hearing from these two. Guaranteed that, and the United States Championship goes home to the Stud Stable and Jimmy Golden. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, now making his way to the ring in what is rumored to be his final match here tonight, his retirement match. Is Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, pops in the ring now, coming into the ring, beautiful robe, tremendous athlete as he faces the former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Tommy Wildfire Rich. They have had some situations here, especially last time here in Birmingham between Buddy Landell and Tommy Rich as Tommy Rich was facing the dirty white boy Buddy Landell in the that match. And now it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, Buddy Landell versus Tommy Wildfire Rich. Well, it's your boy, Buddy Landell. He has been wrestling professionally for about 20 years now. He says this is going to be his last match. We'll see. You never know about Buddy Landell. He could come back next week. Well, that, that is truly the, the character of one Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Can you trust what the man is talking about all the time? As Tommy Wildfire, which makes his way to the ring right now, tremendous athlete, tremendous legend in professional wrestling, uh, tremendous battles throughout the years with Harley Race and Austin Idol, and of course uh, uh, the King Jerry Lawler, as well as the team with six stars as Thunderbolt Patterson and Stan Hansen, and now tonight faces the Nature Boy Buddy Landell in what should be a tremendous match. What are the NWA World Heavyweight Champions of all time. Tommy Wildfire Rich won the title back in 1980 to become the youngest NWA World Heavyweight Champion. He is a great pro wrestler that battles with Bad Dog Buzz Sawyer that people will never forget. Also with Ole Anderson and many more. He's shaking the hands. Tommy Rich has been loved by wrestling fans throughout the country, throughout the world. He's also been hated by many wrestling fans throughout the world. But right now, Tommy Rich is loved by many. Well, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready. Of course, right here in this very arena, teaming with his uh, cousin, Johnny Rich. Tremendous battle with Robert Fuller and Jimmy Golden and the Nightmares. And tonight, of course, Nightmare Ken Wayne will be in the main event, teaming with the Dirty White Boy that face Michael Hayes and Ray Gordy in our main event here tonight at Bow Wale Auditorium. As a tribute to Terry Bam Bam Gordy continues as Betty Landell finally now taking that robe off as we get ready for this match as Tommy Wildfire Rich facing Nature Boy Buddy Landell. This match should prove to be a great contest. Tommy Wildfire Rich, Nature Boy Buddy Landell, they're very similar in the way they wrestle. They lock up. You have to remember, they have been former tag team partners. Buddy Landell, Tommy Rich, one-time tag team partners. And right now, Buddy Landell pulled Tommy Rich back into the ropes, and now Tommy Rich now coming back out. Both men now circle, get ready to lock in again. Locker and color and elbow as uh, Betty Landale facing Tommy Rich. Landale pulls him back in the rope. So a right hand, Tommy Rich retaliates with his own. Betty Landale now standing toe to toe. And like we said, it could be the very last match, the retirement match for Buddy Landale here at Bowell Auditorium. Well, nature boy, Buddy Landale. He's a former Mid-South television champion. He has held numerous titles as well throughout the country. He has uh, took the name of Nature Boy. Uh, nature Boy Rick Flair evidently was his idol growing up. But he's, as time has progressed, he has said he's the only Nature Boy at pro wrestling. And that's, uh, that's very hard to take. Well, right now, Buddy Landell in control of the match. Right now has a hold of uh, uh, Tommy Rich's arm. Now again, twists it around. Tremendous pressure as Tommy Rich now in trouble here at Bowell Auditorium. And now Tommy Rich comes over, kicks him off. Buddy Landell goes down the ropes. Tremendous arm drag as Tommy Rich is in control, has him in an arm bar. Buddy Landell comes up to his knees. Well, I noticed that Buddy Landell made sure he got up. He got up, so he did not stay on the mat. That is where you don't want to be. You don't want to stay on the mat when you're in the ring with someone like Tommy Rich because he will take advantage of that. He will take advantage of it, and he will beat you. <laughs> Referee Larry Brock right there telling Buddy Landell to open that fist up. Now stumps the toe, and now another reversal, and now Buddy Landell full handful of hair pulls Tommy Rich to the canvas. Well, that's a nature boy, Buddy Landell, trademark. Pulling the hair, pulling the, the trunk. 
That is a Nature Boy Buddy Landell trademark, and it has always been that way. Notice, and notice, going to change that. notice how Buddy Landell now stands over the man. And we noticed earlier when Tommy Rich had him in the arm bar, came right to his feet. Now Tommy Rich is not going anywhere. He has the bar. He's got the pressure on him. Referee Larry Brock right there asking Tommy Rich if he'd like to give it up. Well, that shows Nature Boy Buddy Landell. It shows the experience that he has. Not saying that Tommy Rich is not a smart man, not a smart wrestler. There you see a big knee, the big chop by Nature Boy Buddy Landell. And Tommy Rich and a big right that takes Tommy Rich down. Again, now Landell pulls the man back out into the middle of the ring. Ooh, another right hand puts Tommy Rich to the canvas. And now a nonchalant cover. You're not going to be Tommy Rich. Now Tommy Rich has even a head scissors. Landell able to roll out of that one. Tommy Rich now coming back up to his feet. Both men now sitting and going back, trying to re, uh, reestablish himself in this match. Well, you know, Nature Boy Buddy Landell has been cocky throughout the years. That is what's kept Nature Boy Buddy Landell to take him to the World Heavyweight Championship because he had the talent and he has the talent to become one of the greatest in pro wrestling, but he's always been that cocky self and he's always kept himself down to a certain extent. Now, Buddy Landell now, they're trying. Tommy Rich now backing away. Both men very cautious in this match. Landell now trying. Now we're going to have a test of strength right here. Ooh, a poke right in the eye by Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Rich is in the corner now. Grabs him. Another right hand. Rich now to oh, through the second rope on out to the floor. Is that what you see? Nature Boy Buddy Landell going after Tommy Rich on the outside of the floor. Darius C. rounds up into the timekeeper's table at the uh, ringside. Tremendous again, Landell, another right hand, I mean right in the jaw of Tommy Rich here at Bowell Auditorium, and again, another one, now Tommy Rich back into the barricade as Buddy Landell continues his attack here at Bowell and now puts Tommy Rich back into the ring. Landell now moves back in. Tremendous match, tremendous battle now, uh, uh, Buddy Landell has a front chin lock. Well, he's going to try to take the win out of Tommy Rich. He's going to try to take him out because he's took him out on the outside. He's rammed his head into the, the, the table at ringside. So right now, what he wants to do, he wants to wear Tommy Rich down. This is a hold that will wear you down. It takes the, it takes your breath away from you. It takes where you cannot breathe. He also bends the man over a little bit. So he does not have That's the easiest. Easy take. He cannot breathe that easy. So this move will wear a man down. And eventually, can help you win the match. Well, right now, Tommy Rich now. Now he's still still trying, still trying the battle now. Coming up. Buddy Landell continues to hold that chin lock. Tommy Rich now coming up to his knees. Now apparently trying for the rope. No, no, he's trying it out. Buddy Landell. Buddy Landell continues with the pressure on Tommy Rich. Well, Tommy Rich falls back down. The referee is checking Tommy Rich. That's two times his, uh, his, hand, his hands up. His hands up. Didn't go down for the second time. Well, that's what Bailey I was Landell, talking about. As you notice, Bailey Landell doesn't have all of his weight down on Tommy Rich right there. He did not have all of his weight down on him, but he continues to maintain that chin lock. Going across the nose, going across the mouth, making it difficult for Tommy Rich to breathe. Well, that's what it's all about. That's what a chin lock is all about. It is to wear a man down, wear him down where he cannot breathe. You take a person's breathing away from him, you're going to take his ability away from him. And this is what Buddy Landell was, is going to do. Very smart wrestling by Buddy Landell. Larry, Larry Brock right there, making sure Tommy Rich is uh, still conscious in this one. And Tommy Rich now coming back. Coming back now. He's up on one knee. Comes back up both feet now. Tommy Rich now. Buddy Landell continues. Continues the, uh, to hold on to that chin lock. Tommy Rich now. Both feet up. He's back on his feet. There he goes. He gets up. He goes over the ropes. He goes for an elbow smash. He goes for a oh, big hose line by Buddy Landell. Followed up by a knee, but Tommy Rich got out of the way. Tommy Rich now. Now seems to be getting his second win in this match. As Buddy Landell missed with that knee, and now Buddy Landell caught with a clothesline, pulls then right back into the corner. Landell now being stomped by Tommy Rich in the corner. Referee Larry Brock right there trying to break it up. <laughs> Tommy Rich now got, it, got that second win. As now he moves in on Nature Boy Buddy Landell. Landell now takes it out, whips it into the other corner. Tommy Rich now moves in. Well, there you see Tommy Wildfire Rich now on the uh, top rope, the second rope, and going to ask the fans if they want to hit him, and he is going to do it. Pounding him with a fist right there. Larry Brock all over Tommy Rich, asking him to break it up right there. Very close to disqualification right there. Now he whips the end of the ropes. He comes back off a big. That's a sleeper hold for Tommy Rich. This could be it. 
Oh, no. He caught him. <laughs> Landell dropped down, driving the jaw on the top of the head of Buddy Landell. Landell now. Five more close line. Tommy Rick jumping over. There's Press. Got away from his Press. And wait a second. There's the dirty white boy. There is the dirty white boy, Tommy Evans. They, Buddy Landell and uh, the dirty white boy have been running together here lately. And now pounding dirty white boy, pounding Tommy Rich. Well, the referee has called for the bell. He's, he's evidently disqualified nature boy, Buddy Landell. Here we see dirty white boy just pounding and pounding away on Tommy Rich. Two on one, shades of the last meeting between the dirty white boy, Buddy Landell, and Tommy Rich. And now it's two on one. And now dirty white boy. And now talking and, and telling Tommy Rich now it's time to pay as Buddy uh, the, the dirty white boy now sets him up. Oh my God, he's got him set up. Oh, Spike Podrider. Is this Stop not a way? Him. Is this not a way for for Buddy Landell to have a retirement match? To, to uh, double I mean, what, from that. This is the way it goes down in the history books. Buddy Landell's last match, the end of the career of Tommy Rich. That's the way he wants to go out. When you spike pile drive someone, it takes and takes all your vertebrae through your neck and everything and hurts you. And here Tommy Rich just got spike pile drive. Right. Let's see what Dirty White Boy has to say. My, nah, my, nah, the history. Last time right here with the Dirty White Boy, Tommy Rich, Buddy Landell, and now Tommy Rich spike pile drive in the middle of the ring. And of course, that's Shades of the Man, the tribute tonight of Terry Bam Bam Gordy, the master, the pile driver. And tonight, the dirty wide boy uh, uh, and uh, Buddy Landell, of course, Buddy Landell leaves in his final match saying uh, that he uh, injured Tommy Rick. Here we see the referee, Larry Brock, checking Tommy Rich.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, this, this is, is it. The six-man challenge match. We saw it last time here at Battle Auditorium where Jerry Stubbs backstabbed the board and Scott Armstrong. And, of course, last time Ron Fuller made this challenge, made this six-man tag team match as Jerry Stubbs, the new United States champion Jimmy Golden and Robert Fuller face the Tennessee stud Ron Fuller, Mr. Badger the Ball on the board, and Scott Armstrong right here at Bowell Auditorium. There is Jerry Stubbs, Mr. Perfect, the man that was the special referee in the match. He took power through it in the eyes of Bob Armstrong, the board, and then uh, those three attacked Ron Fuller, and now this six-man tag team war is beginning right here at the tribute to Freebird Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Six-man tag team match, Jimmy Golden, new United States champion, Robert Fuller, and of course, Jerry Stubbs. And now we're getting ready, we're waiting impatiently right now for Mr. Bad to the bone, the bullet, Scott Armstrong and the Tennessee Stud, Ron Fuller. And the first time the Tennessee Stud has been in the ring in quite some time, and tonight he comes out of retirement to face these three men, Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden, who are his cousin and his brother, and Jerry Stubbs. What tremendous history there is between all six of these men, Robert Fuller, uh, Ron Fuller, Jimmy Golden, Jerry Stubbs, and of course now they're making their way to the ring. Mr. Bad to the Bone, Bad to the Bone, going out throughout this arena. Scott Armstrong, former United States Junior Champion, and then, wait a second, there's Ron Fuller, and apparently he has a sling uh, on his arm. I, I'm not sure uh, what this means for this six-man tag team match. No, I don't either. I cannot, I cannot understand what happened to Ron Fuller, the Tennessee Stud. Robert Fuller all over Ron Fuller right now. Ron Fuller on the outside, the man who, who challenged, made the challenge for this six-man tag team war as the bullet Scott go around, uh, Scott Armstrong go around, and uh, Robert the fans, of course, Alabama is Armstrong country, we all, we all know that, as the bullet and Scott Armstrong make their way into the ring right now, here about well, this tribute to Freebird, Terry Bam Bam, boy, your referee in this match is Roy George, six-man, Southern Street fight, no disqualification, the bullet now, oh my, from next to a tremendous shape of the bullet Bob Armstrong. And right now, Scott Armstrong being introduced to the six-man tag team war. And however, Ron Fuller on the outside in a swing. Uh, apparently, his arm has been injured. We're going to find out, I guess, here momentarily as uh, Ron Fuller uh, on the outside and the bullet Bob Armstrong, Scott Armstrong. And I, and I just wonder if, if, if Ron Fuller is not able to complete if it's going to be a three-on-two situation in this match as Ron Fuller now is asking for the microphone. comments of the Tennessee stud and now calling out his son who is apparently going to take his place in the six-man tag team match Chad Fuller apparently not very graceful but maybe Lance is going to be in this match well you got to understand that the, the, the mat around the ring sometimes gets a little little slick you got to look at this man look at this he is bigger than the Tennessee stud three bit as tall as the Tennessee stud Chad Fuller now in the corner with the stud. Oh my comments from Robert Fuller. And now, now the six men are out of now. Robert Fuller now with Chad Fuller in the corner. Chad just is manhandling Robert Fuller. Robert Fuller finally pulls him in, pulls him back in the corner. The board now, Scott Armstrong cleans house. Jimmy Golden uh, and now on the outside of Robert Fuller goes down. And uh, injury steps as well. Well, they go all out to the right. I'm gonna tell you where this Chad Fuller was taking Robert Fuller and beating him like a dog. Right there, my goodness. Tremendous. Look how tall, look how tall Chad Fuller is. Tremendous, tremendous. Very impressive looking. And now the bullet 
the board is Scott Armstrong really waiting for the uh, stead stable to get back into the ring. Well, this Chad Fuller has to be 7'2". Probably weighs a good, what, 270. I mean, this man is huge, and uh, he is he is the son of the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller, no doubt. Former basketball player at Tennessee Wesleyan College in Athens, Tennessee. Uh, now makes his home in Florida, and now here tonight in his first appearance uh, in, in this historic night uh, to the tribute of Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Six-man tag team match. The Studs stable now trying to regroup. Robert Fuller getting the troops together. Jerry Studs, Jimmy Golden. Fans are looking on as Robert Fuller now begins to lay out the, uh, the, the, the game plan here tonight in this six-man tag team war. Chad Fuller moving the outside of the ring. Looks like uh, the bullet. Now they are uh, getting together, trying to uh, work out their strategy for this six-man tag team match. And of course, no one really knew Chad Fuller was going to be uh, in the corner in, a, in, in this match here tonight. Well, right now, I think the uh, Robert Fuller and them are arguing. Let's hear what the announcer has to say. Well, there you see the announcer just said this is a southern street fight. What they were doing, they were arguing about Chad Fuller. They were arguing about what he was wearing. He was wearing street clothes. Well, this is a southern street fight. It doesn't matter. Well, what do you think Jerry Stubbs was wearing? That's what I was about to say. What, what is Jerry Stubbs wearing? That, that's, not, that's not wrestling gear. That's, uh, that looks like a warm-up suit and t-shirt. Well, and, and, and it looks like boots. And look, look, is that sneakers he's wearing? But wouldn't you be upset if there were a 7'2", 270 pound man? Well, there, was, there was going to be a 7'2", 270 pound man in the, in the other, opposite side of the ring anyway. Well, 6'9", I think Ron Fuller is 6'9". Chad Fuller, much bigger. Right. Much bigger and much younger than the Tennessee stud Ron Fuller. Uh, but still... Look, now Jerry Stubbs with a headlock on. Jerry Stubbs used to be called Mr. Perfect. And he's the Benedict Arnold here, ladies and gentlemen. Last time, special guest referee in the tag team war between Robert Ford, Jimmy Golden, the board, and Scott Armstrong. And uh, Stubbs uh, made himself very well known as he backstabbed the bullet and cost the match to the Armstrongs last time. Scott Armstrong now picks him up, hip tosses him in, nails Jimmy Golden the outside, nails Robert Ford. Scott Armstrong on fire grab, measures Jerry Stubbs with another right hand. Stubbs now, the bullet on the inside of Chapman puts Jerry Stubbs down to the canvas. Well, a bullet came in and, and uh, kind of just tapped Jerry Stubbs. One, two, only a two count, and Jerry Stubbs count, uh, he kicked out of it. But uh, it was so funny because he, he just kind of packed on him, and he worked over, and the bullet just gave him a big ride and took Jerry Stubbs right under the mat. The bullet back in right now. Oh, my typical Armstrong double, and of course, we've seen this several times. A big chop puts Jerry Stubbs back to the canvas and into the corner. Tag made to Robert Fuller. Here he is, the man that calls himself the Tennessee Stud. And of course, tonight they have made their presence known in the first match, just demolishing both wrestlers. Becoming, of course, Jimmy Golden becoming the United States champion of the bullet. Four back into the corner. Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden now. Double team in and Fuller duck. Robert Fuller hit his own man. Jimmy Golden on the outside of a chop. Puts Robert Fuller back to the canvas. Well, the bullet has came into the ring. He has showed them that he is a legendary wrestler, that he is one of the greats in this sport called professional wrestling. Robert Fuller all upset that the bullet came in and kind of cleared house of all three men. The deviousness of one Robert Fuller as the bullet now locked in. Now the bullet's got that. Now look at it. Bob Armstrong taking that arm and now just twisting that angle, just twisting the arm. Tremendous pressure put on Robert Fuller. Robert Fuller now tries to turn over to break the pressure. Oh my, look at that. Right across the knee, pulling the wrist back as the bullet now just oh, steps right on the head of Robert Fuller. Well, Robert Fuller, right now, he is still in the front of the bullet as he takes that in. I think Scott Armstrong just got the tag, comes in. I think he come off the second row. Why wasn't Chad Ford tagged in like that? I have to wonder exactly what transpired there. Uh, they've been uh, and I'm sure the team of Ford, Golden Stubb, the rotating well. And now Scott Armstrong tagged back in. Now Chad Ford, we haven't been able to see him yet. Well, I, I, you got to understand, Chad Fuller is not a professional wrestler. Chad Fuller is just there to kind of even out the score. There you see a big arm drag and takedown by Scott Armstrong on Robert Fuller. But you got to understand, Chad Fuller is not a pro, pro wrestler. He is nothing more than a man to stand there and make sure that everything goes right. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're going to have a partner right there just as well not had a partner at all, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. I mean, let's be honest. I understand they're trying to protect him, trying to maintain control here. Uh, but right 
right now. Wait a second. Now, Chad Four, this is exactly what I was talking about. Upset. He was upset because he was not tagged in, and now he's gotten mad and, and apparently walking out on the Armstrong. Ron Ford trying to get Chad to come back. Well, I could tell he was. I could tell he was getting upset. He was getting upset about not being able to get tagged in. But you know, I understand what you're saying. But but still, they're trying to say. Well, look at that. Now, yeah, that, that distraction of wondering why Chad Moore left. And of course, I understand they're trying to protect him. He is not as experienced as the Armstrongs are. Uh, and now, uh, Jimmy Golden is taking control of this match on Scott Armstrong. You, you get in the, the ring, champion, just pounding him. You think about it. You get in the ring with Jimmy Golden. You get in the ring with Robert Fuller, Jerry stuff. All devious people. All have done some things that that you cannot believe. They got. They wanted to take care of him. They didn't want him to get hurt. And right now, look at this. They are double teaming on him. And that's yes, right now. That could very well be Chad Fuller. Uh, as now the team, the set stable, is in control right now of Scott Armstrong uh, during this match. This could be the six-man tag team Southern Street Fight. And Chad Fuller would not be able to take the punishment that a Scott Armstrong would, that a Bullet Bob Armstrong would, because these guys have been wrestling well, professionals. He really wouldn't know that because he wouldn't even allow to be in the ring. Well, I think they, it was, they were trying to protect him. I think it was a good thing. There you see Robert Fuller coming in the ring, taking Scott Armstrong, a big knee lift by Robert Fuller. Now Robert Fuller in control right now. Scott Armstrong in trouble uh, as the stud stable has moved in control of this match. And now a big bear hug. Robert Fuller now putting the pressure all on the back as pulls him back into the corner. Jerry Stubbs now on the outside just pulling the man back. Now distracting the bullet. The referee uh, trying to keep the bullet out of the ring as the suit all three men attacking Scott Armstrong in the corner. Tag made. Here comes the U.S. champion Jimmy Golden. Well, yeah, this is a bad place for Scott Armstrong to be. You do not want to be in the corner of three men that are devious. Three men that will do anything to win a match. And this is where he's at. But this is great wrestling. This is great uh, wrestling on their part. Keep him in the corner. Trying to keep him now. Scott Armstrong in the middle of the ring. Making headway. Making one step to as Jimmy Golden keeps on. Almost. He is almost there. The bullet stretching his head. Now Ron Fuller is back up on the ring apron. Ron Fuller is now up on the ring apron. I guess Ron Fuller is going to wrestle with one arm. He's going to get out there and help the bullet and Scott Armstrong and that shows that Ron Fuller has a little bit of class. Well, Ron Fuller now back up into the corner. Jerry steps into the ring double. Oh my. Both men run each other's heads together. Now both men are down. Referee Roy George right there checking both of them. Beginning the 10th count. There's a count of one. Robert Fuller, now the six-man tag team war, still on the way as, as both of these men, Jerry Stubbs and Scott Armstrong, try to make their way to the ring. And now both men, Scott, uh, the board, Ron Fuller, have their heads, heads stretched out, waiting for Scott Armstrong. The tag is made. Here comes Jimmy Golden. The tag is made. Here comes Bob in the ball. Here comes the bullet. Bob Armstrong with a chop, chop to Robert Fuller, puts him down the canvas, and another one to Jimmy Golden. He is getting in the ring. He's chopping both men. He is chopping them in. He is taking them down. The bullet is taking care of business. It shows why he is bad to the bone. Now he goes up. He rolls the man up. Takes him down. Here we go. Here comes Ron Fuller. Ron Fuller getting ready to kick his foot. Oh, what is this? What is this? Ron Fuller just met, just stopped the Tennessee stud and hit the referee. And now stopping Mr. Bad to the bone. The bullet. I cannot believe the Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller. What he's yeah, doing here. I, this is, you got to think that this had been planned from day one, from the match, the six-man tag team match from the, the, the time before. Ron Fuller is the one that made the match. He made that challenge, and now, now a double pile driver. You have to think about the history between the Fullers and the Armstrong, and now Ron Fuller showing his two colors. The full stud stater is in full force now as Chad Fuller makes his way back in the ring and now pins the bullet, and the Tennessee stud Ron Fuller counting Bob Armstrong the bullet out. The Fuller family, the Jimmy Golden, all together stud stable now just laying waste to Bob the Bone, the bullet, and Scott Armstrong. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe that the Tennessee stud has once again, actually, let's be honest, has shown his true colors. How many times has the Tennessee stud Ron Fuller done this kind of thing to Ron Fuller? Wait a Several second. Times. Here comes Mr. Wrestling 2 with a chair. Mr. Wrestling 2 and now the stud stable in full force now with Ron Fuller joining apparently along with Chad Fuller. And now, ladies and gentlemen, well, the damage has certainly already been done.
Wrestling 2 came in, a living legend in the sport of pro wrestling, came in with a chair to get rid of these people. I can't believe this. law enforcement said, you know, they can make the son of the bullet already taken down, saying you really thought I was going to wrestle against my own brother. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The Tennessee stud, Ron Fuller, and now you have to wonder just how uh, much stronger this team is going to be. Hey! 
his tag team partner from Pensacola, Florida, weighing 245 pounds, the fabulous Freebird, Michael Hay. Once again, this is your main event. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event. The tribute to the fabulous Freebird, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. Long-time partner, Michael Hayes, teaming with the son of Terry Gordy, Ray Gordy, to face the Nightmare, Ken Wayne, and the Dirty White Boy right here at Bow Wow Auditorium here August the 11th of 2001. And we are ready for action. Michael Hayes, long-time partner, and of course, till this day, uh, the fabulous Freebirds hold the professional wrestling record for the Louisiana Superdome. That record has never been broken. And now Michael Hayes getting ready to go one-on-one -on -one right here in this tag team match against the dirty white boy, Tony Hayes. Well, this is what it's all about. This is what the whole night was all about. This is the match to tribute a great man, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. There you see Michael Lee is going to hit the dirty white boy. The referee telling him to get off of him. Michael Hayes. Uh, Sometimes hated, sometimes loved, and now to always the leader of the fabulous Freebirds, always in the center in the uh, middle of controversy, no matter wherever they've been. And now the Dirty White Boy, Dirty White Girl on the outside of the ring, uh, in the corner of the Dirty White Boy and Nightmare Ken Wayne. Michael Hayes now getting ready. The crowd is behind Michael Hayes here at Bowell Auditorium doing this tribute. Ray Gordy, for the first time, we are seeing him here tonight live here at Bowell Auditorium. Well, Ray Gordy, he is an impressive-looking individual. He is. He takes time in the gym, it looks like. Now, Dirty White Boy taking over on God. Michael Hayes comes back with an arm drag. There he goes, takes him down. Drops a leg on him and now into the arm bar. Dirty White Boy in trouble uh, as Michael Hayes is taking it to Ken Wayne now trying to sneak from behind. Nightmare Ken Wayne, former tag team champion. Of course, this is strange to see the Dirty White Boy and Ken Wayne on the same team being the tremendous rivalry they've had over the tremendous over the years. And now in this match, they have teamed together. Nightmare Ken Wayne, Dirty White Boy, as the Michael Hayes, a handful of Dirty White Boy's hair pulling back down in the count as Michael Hayes saying no. Typical Michael Hayes behavior here tonight in this tag team match. Well, you know, Michael Hayes has pulled hair many times throughout his career and did a lot of bad things. There you see, there you see the tree. Mark Michael Hayes drive. Oh my. Michael Hayes moonwalking. Oh my. Things never change. Neither does the fabulous Freebirds. Michael Hayes now, once again, getting a crowd behind him here at Bowell Auditorium. Dirty White Girl on the outside. Now they're getting ready to get measuring each other up. Dirty White Boy now locked in corner. But there you see Ray Gordy standing on the outside. A chop to the chest of the Dirty White Boy. Michael Hayes here left for the first time. Ray Gordy in this match. Ray Gordy now measures him up, kick to the, look at that, tremendous kick to the abdominals of the Dirty White Boy. Oh, and another kick by Ray Gordy. Gordy now trying now, taking the Dirty White Boy down to his knees, working on that arm in this tag team match. Michael Hayes on the outside, cheering on Ray Gordy. Well, Ray Gordy, after this event, is going to Japan. He is going to go for a, a six-week tour of Japan where Terry Gordy, his father, was a right. idol over there. He right. was the biggest superstar over in Japan. Right, right. And now, Ray Gordy now following his father's footsteps, and now he's in trouble as the Dirty White Boy has taken over. Full slam on the, uh, Ray Gordy. Gordy now tagged, uh, Dirty White Boy tags in Nightmare Ken Wayne. Gordy catches him with a spin under takedown. Gordy in control as Nightmare Ken Wayne makes it to the ropes. Rick calls for the break. Michael Hayes on the outside of the ring. Well, Ray Gordy's going to have to watch Nightmare Ken Wayne. Nightmare Ken Wayne, along with Danny Davis, was one of the, uh, probably one of the meanest tag teams in the history of pro wrestling. You can notice that right there, Dirty White Boy just tapped Ray Gordy on the back of the head, sort of a, hey, look at me, I'm right back here. And of course, Ray Gordy's going to have to watch that because these two veterans will take advantage of any situation that comes to hand. Well, there you see Ken Wayne asking the referee, tell him, get off of me. When I get to the ropes, back off of me. I know the rules. He doesn't. He's like, no, oh, Ray Gordy doesn't know what uh, what he's doing. But Ray Gordy, I'm pretty sure his father has taught him a lot throughout the years. Right, right. And now Ray Gordy has a full headlock on Nightmare Ken Wayne. Ken Wayne now standing up the dirty white girl looks on and pulls him into the ropes. Now Ray Gordy comes out with a uh, tremendous shoulder block and now... Now, uh, Nightmare Ken Wayne claiming Ray Gordy punched him as he came off with a fist. And it was just a simple um, uh, shoulder block that put uh, Nightmare Ken Wayne down. And now, uh, Nightmare Ken Wayne again complaining that he was punched with a fist right there by Ray Gordy. 
Well, we know that didn't happen. We saw it. I mean, but you got to understand. Look at this man. Look at this man to hit you. I mean, I guess, hit you I guess his shoulder to the face was. He may have thought it was a fist. As big as his shoulder is. I mean, look at look at the look at the body on Ray Gordy. He takes the time. He gets in the gym. He works out. He looks like an athlete. He is going to be a big star in the sport of professional wrestling. Once again, Ray Gordy with a side headlock on Nightmare Ken Wayne. Ken Wayne now, Dirty White Boy looking on in the match as as uh, Ray Gordy continues the pressure, continues to hold uh, the Nightmare Ken Wayne in now. Ken Wayne now trying to maneuver. Trying to figure a way out of this arm lock or this headlock as now he goes back and looks. Ray Gordy into the ropes up and over. Oh, and again another shoulder block puts right now. Ken Wayne down. Well, that's a big man. Ray Gordy is a big man when he comes in and comes off that rope with that authority. He knocked Ken Wayne down hard. Ken Wayne over there just arguing about it, but you got to understand. Here's Ken Wayne, a veteran of the sport, a veteran of the professional wrestling ring. You can see that he's upset now. He's going to get upset about a man that has been wrestling maybe a year now to be able to take that much over on Ken Wayne. Tremendous, tremendous abilities of Ray Gordy here tonight. He is showing himself to, uh, to be a tremendous athlete. Again, a side headlock. Going back to the headlock, apparently uh, feeling that that maneuver is... is uh, making waves and of course it is uh, it is slowly but surely wearing down the nightmare ken wayne uh tonight in this match but when you have arms like ray gordy when you've got the arms you got the well here we go he's gonna whip him off again he does a big bleak frog goes down he goes under what a foot by ray gordy with a big drop kick by ray gordy and it takes Ken Wayne out to the floor, and I don't blame Ken Wayne for going there because Ray Gordy was like a house of fire. Right there, got both of those feet right between the eyes, and now Nightmare Ken Wayne. You know, you've got to be, you, you got, if you're wondering about Nightmare Ken Wayne and the Dirty Water, you've got to think, be thinking to yourself, what have we got ourselves into? You would think that uh, Ray Gordy not being in, in professional wrestling that long uh, would give him this much trouble, but right now, in firm control are the uh, Freebirds, uh, Ray Gordy and Michael Hayes at this time, and now the Dirty White Boy, the veteran, former Smoky Mountain champion, former tag team champion, and now making his way into the ring, Dirty White Boy, and of course we saw him earlier with Tommy Rich deliver that tremendous pile driver, shades of Terry Gordy, and I just wonder if that's uh, something that uh, uh, the Dirty White Boy was thinking about to try to send a message to the Freebirds later in this match. Well, you know, I heard, uh, I saw the Dirty White Boy out there saying, hey, I want a timeout, I want a timeout. There's no timeouts in professional wrestling, Kimberly. Uh, there's no timeout. Big Drop kick by Ray Gordy takes Dirty White Boy down. Another drop kick by Ray Gordy, and Dirty White Boy decides to go out. Two drop kicks, and now the Dirty White Boy is frustrated on the outside. They are frustrated, and they're just, I, I think they're wondering right now. They're beginning to find out just who Ray Gordy is, and Michael Hayes has certainly, you know, Michael Hayes has got the microphone. What I thought he well, I think I think you know I think what Danny I think what not Danny Davis but Kenny Wayne and uh, the Dirty White Boy thought they thought they were going to come into this match. Ray Gordy was going to be a pushover. He wasn't. He's going to be an easy night for him. And then they found out that Ray Gordy not only is he in shape, but he does know how to wrestle. And I think now they're just kind of looking at it. And probably now they've went back out and they thought about hey, how can we do this? I think what we're seeing is the experience of Michael Hayes. Notice Michael Hayes, not he's just sitting calm, cool as uh, Ray Gordy is out there and. I I think they have really scouted this match. I think they have really got their plan together. And now it is it is working as now Ray Gordy has control of the Dirty White Boys' legs here tonight. Well, if you think about it, Michael Hayes, Terry Gordy, and Buddy Roberts, the fabulous Freebirds, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. They're probably never going to be another tag team that can, can even compare to those people. They were great. Terry Gordy, a great pro wrestler. Michael Hayes, a man that knew how to get in that ring, and he knew how to take advantage of the referee. He knew how to take advantage of the other wrestlers. And this, this, they have fought to Ray Gordy, and now the tag to the veteran of Michael Hayes. Freebird comes in now, going right after the leg of the Dirty White Boy. Michael Hayes now stomping the leg, continues to put the pound of the pound of pressure on the Dirty White Boy. Michael Hayes now goes in again, drops down now, spinning over, grabs a hold of the leg and continues to put, maintain the pressure on the leg of the Dirty White Boy. Classic tag team wrestling, going after one body part, wearing that one body part down. This is classic tag team wrestling. Well, this is tag team at its best. This is what it's all about. Stand with one body part. Making sure that that man Look at that. Michael that. Hayes. Look at that. Had a, once again, that goes back to Shades of the Freebirds of that never say, never can do, uh, never 
Well, in other words, in other words, they can, they, say. Shoot, they can shoot at any time, and Mike Hayes, Terry Gordy have done it so many times throughout their career. Yeah. I have seen them do a lot of bad things, like Kyle Drive, Ted DiBiase, on this concrete floor. They are devious people, and they'll do anything to win, and Mike Hayes has not changed. No, not at all. Freebirds, as the song says, Freebirds cannot change, and right now, Michael Hayes, now in control, has that step over toe hold, maintain the pressure on a dirty white boy. Well, as you see here, he's going to go back over. There you see Ken Wayne, he's going to come in. It looks like Ken Wayne wants to come in. Dirty White go out there saying no. There you big. He just came down hard on the Dirty White boy's leg. Now that had to be hurt. Yeah, right there, maintaining it now the Dirty White boy. Feeling the effects of uh, Michael Hayes uh, and Ray Gordy as they went after the leg. And, of course, that is, like we said, classic tag team strategy. And the Dirty White boy now showing the effects of that, uh, the, the, the maintain the pressure in the, uh, on that leg. Well, if you remember, it was right here in the Alabama area where Michael Hayes and Terry Gordy got back together as a tag team. Uh, Michael Hayes was getting going to get his hair cut with the sheep herders, and here comes Terry Gordy to stop that from happening. It all came back together right here in this area, and that. Well, wait a minute now. They just took over on Michael Hayes. Right, Michael Hayes now in trouble. And now this is where they are dangerous in their corner. Nightmare Ken Wayne now forcing uh, Michael Hayes now whipped in the ground. A reversal by Michael Hayes. And now, oh my. Nightmare Ken Wayne up and over the top rope and now on the floor. I'm not so sure Ken Wayne is going to get up after that. He is not going to, well, I guess Ray Gordy's going to help him, but no, the Dirty White Boy out. That's what we're talking about. Ray Gordy turned his back just for a moment, and Dirty White Boy took over on him, slammed him into that table. Nightmare Ken Wayne, and now uh, with the Dirty White Boy on the outside, Michael Hayes still on the inside of the ring as now Dirty White Boy and Ken Wayne begin to regroup. Well, you know, I tell you, I cannot believe that Ken Wayne, after that, would have the ability to get back up and go back into the ring. Now, that is surprising to me about Nightmare Ken Wayne. I know he's a great athlete. He has always been great. A former tag team champion with his partner, Danny Davis. They were one of the greatest tag teams in the history of pro wrestling. But neither the Dirty White Boy knows tag team wrestling as well. He was very stud and was a very great tag team. Right, right now, this, this team right here is frustrated as the Freebirds continue to man maintain their offense, maintain their superiority in this match. And now, uh, Nightmare Ken Wayne uh, complaining that he was thrown over the top rope, which in, here at WrestleMania it is a disqualification. And now, Nightmare Ken Wayne trying to uh, get the rep to disqualify the Freebirds. Well, I don't think he threw him over the top rope. I think this man has such a great strength about him that when he heaved him, he just heaved him hard. And it, the, the, it just the, momentum, him. the momentum just took him right over. And now it's shot to Nightmare Ken Wayne. Ken Wayne back in the corner again. Michael Hayes. Ken Wayne now. And I, and I really think this team of Wayne and Dirty White Boy, they are frustrated. Uh, they have not been able to mount any kind of offense as of yet in this match. And now Michael Hayes now with a lock in with Nightmare Ken Wayne. Now the tag is made again. Here comes Ray Gordy. Now the whip into the ropes. Ken Wayne comes out now. A double boot to the middle. And now grabs a whole head for a head and slams Ken Wayne down. Wait, go, there you go. They whip them into each other. But he whips them. Whoa, my goodness gracious. He put him down there. Let's see. We'll have a three count right now. One, a two. Put on the rope. Put on the rope that time. Ken Wayne knowing exactly where he's at in the ring. And oh my, he just got himself on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the ring post there trying to get away from Ray Gordon. Well, if he didn't go down the last time, he went over the top rope. This may be the end of Ken Wayne now. Look at, look at Dirty White Girl up there saying, no, no, he's, he's had it up. Yeah. She needs a timeout, no doubt. <laughs> he definitely needs a timeout after that one. Kind of a surprise right there in the corner post. Now the Dirty White Boy down there seeing, uh, and of course right now the referee should be starting a 10 count. Well, he can go up and, and sing with the flames now and, and do the high octone uh, stuff on that today because that had to hurt. Oh, my, now. Finally now, Ken Wayne now being able to make his way back into the ring, and now the tag is going to be made. Here comes the Dirty White Boy, and now going after Ray Gordy one more time, and you know you've got to be saying now, you've got to be saying to yourself, Dirty White Boy is beginning to uh, have some respect for Ray Gordy. Well, he should. He should because it's, I think Ray Gordy has showed them that he is a professional. He's only wrestled a year, but he has the ability to get in the ring and take over the situation. Yeah, tonight he's showing that he's just not just Terry Gordy's son. He's in fact Ray Gordy and probably the next generation of fabulous freebird right here.
There you see, he's going to whip some in. He whips him out, he goes over and picks him up. Picks him up right there, has him, holds him, comes down, side slam. Side slam by the Jody White Boy, and this could be very well be the beginning of the end for Ray Gordy as the Dirty White Boy with a tremendous side slam and now it looks like the momentum is beginning to turn in favor of Nightmare Ken Wayne and the Dirty White Boy. Well, the Dirty White Boy said something to Michael Hayes. I cannot, I could not tell what he said, but uh, I have a feeling that Ray Gordy's in trouble now. Well, the trouble now, now we're beginning to see it. And we're going to be seeing that, that, that mean streak of the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony. It doesn't matter that this is a tribute to that man's father. They're going to make an example. They're going to come out of here with a win tonight. Dirty white boy and Nightmare Ken Wayne. And now a full uh, suplex right there. And uh, Ray Gordy is in trouble. Uh, now, right now, he is really now uh, uh, mocking Michael Hayes, his dirty white boy, as now they continue the pressure on Ray Gordy. And now sets him up. Tremendous swinging neck breaker right there. And Ray Gordy Gordy is in trouble. Ray Gordy is in trouble. They're going to now take that that tag team wrestler that we talked about. Now we're going to see Ken Wayne, and there we whip him in for a double elbow. Double elbow right there. It is gut check time for Ray Gordy. Right now, he's seen him if he can dish it. Now he's seen him dish out the punishment. Now can he take it? And now he kicks out from Nightmare Ken Wayne. Ray Gordy is still in this one as Nightmare Ken Wayne. Now with his bear hug on Ray Gordy. Gordy now in trouble as Nightmare Ken Wayne and the Dirty White Boy have taken control of this match. You keep the you keep the uh, the bear hug on. Keep it on. Wear the man down. Take the breath away from him. If you keep on taking and taking and pushing and pushing, the man cannot breathe, and this can take a man completely out. If you have you keep this hold on long enough, you can bring him out. Obviously, the focus in this one is the back now. Slapping those ears right now, breaking the bear hug. Now bear, Ken Wayne right back to that bear hug. And things have went well right there, another one. Now, right, and now right, uh, Ray Gordy now trying his best to try to make the tag to Michael Hayes. Ken Wayne now holds him back. Well, this is classic tag team wrestling. We talked about it with Michael Hayes. Now we see it with Nightmare Ken Wayne. He is going to keep the man in his corner the best he can. That's what he has to do. That's what he's going to do because he knows. Keep him in the corner. Keep the tags going. And keep the working on the back. And keep it pounding on it. But now he breaks out. He kept tosses him over. Now Ray Gordy in trouble. Now Nightmare Ken Wayne has a hold of the leg. As Ray Gordy tries, tags made. Here comes a dirty white boy. And now, oh, an elbow across the top of the head. Head. Pits uh, Ray Gordy back into the corner. Another one to the top of the head. Dirty White Boy now takes it. Rips Ray Gordy into the corner. Comes up. Ooh, a big foot right into the face of Ray Gordy. It is amazing how things can change one move. That side slam by the Dirty White Boy has changed everything. And now the Dirty White Boy is in control as the pin right now only a count of two as Ray Gordy just barely gets that shoulder up. Well, I think now they're showing Ray Gordy what the wrestling business is all about. They're showing them now. This is the kind of punishment you're going to take. This is the kind of punishment that you're going to be dished out. And now, can you take it? This is going to be cut check time for Ray Gordy. Well, now, atomic drop. Still continue the attack on the back is the dirty white boy as he continues to move in a right hand to the side of the head. And another one. Oh, my. Right again to uh, Ray Gordy in trouble. The whipping the ropes comes off a tremendous clothesline. Dirty White Boy in control, in command of this match, and Ray Gordy has now got to make that tag to Michael Hazer. This very well could be over. Well, I think that Ray Gordy, you can see, you can see he is worn out. Look at that Dirty White Boy just slapping him on the head now. Now they're getting, they're, now, now they're getting, they're seeing, they're saying, hey, we've got Ray Gordy where we want him. We, we've got him. And you got to know what this is doing to, to Michael Hayes in the corner. You know Hayes is wanting to get in there really bad and, and try to stop this punishment that Ray Gordy is taking right here. Now Nightmare Ken Wayne in another right hand. Now Mark, uh, Gordy trying to shake it off. And now, now, now on the outside of the ring, Journey White attacking Ray Gordy, Michael Hayes. Coming in, distracting the referee. Now it's two on one on the, on the outside. It's Jody White Boy. Ken Wayne continues the onslaught on Ray Gordy. Snapmare takedown. Now Ken by the referee right there, kind of out of position, only a count of two. And now Nightmare Ken Wayne has a hold of the tights, I believe. And now still couldn't get a three count as now. The referee continues to try to count only a count of two. And Ray Gordy is continually to kick out as Nightmare Ken Wayne continues the onslaught. Well, it shows that Ray Gordy is, he is wanting to 
win this match. He has not won to go down. You've seen this tough one kick it out and tough one kick it out. Tremendous heart. Tremendous heart by Ray Gordy. But you must understand. You must understand. Night Ray Ken Wayne did that for a reason. You keep the man going. You keep the man going. Keep on making him kick out. Keep on kicking and wear him down until you can beat the man. Right now, he's got him in that head scissors. I got his legs in a, in a scissors right there. Ray Gordy now trying to move up right now. Now, a right hand into the stomach. Another one over the stomach of the nightmare. Ken Wayne. Ken Wayne now with a forearm. Now it is uh, Ray Gordy. And now Dirty White Boy comes from behind. What is it? Now the referee finally. The tag is made. The tag. tag is made. Here comes Michael Hayes. Michael Hayes has got it. No, wait a second. Referee did not see the tag. He didn't see the tag. And now that looks. Referee is now being distracted. Is now Dirty White Boy comes and did not make the tag. And now the abdominal stretch put on Ray Gordy. This can put this can put a lot of pressure on your back. This can tear our back out. And if he stays in this long enough, he'll wake up the next morning not being able to walk. This this is what it's all led up to right here. A tremendously excruciating uh, hold right here. We've had the side slam, the suplex is weakening the back and now has the abdominal stretch. Tremendous pressure right here uh, by the dirty white boy Tony Anthony as the referee is right in there asking Ray Gordy if he wants to give it up. Well, you see Michael Hayes, you can see just a little bit of him over there. He is wanting Ray Gordy to come on, to come alive, to come out of this. And now Dirty White Boy breaks the hold and just starts pounding on his back. Right now, now the tag is going to be made, apparently. No, <laughs> apparently the Nightmare Kid Wayne has had enough on the outside, maybe, as the Dirty White Boy continues, picks him up full slam as they continue to try to weaken uh, the back. And now tries for a headbutt, and Ray Gordy moves out of the way. Well, he's going to go out to the tag. Can he get the tag to Michael Hayes? We'll just have to wait and see. Dirty White Boy not going to get it. And Michael Hayes gets the tag and comes in. And it's clearing house. Hayes now right hands and going after. Dirty White Boy, another one on the side. Dirty White Boy goes on the outside of the ring. Michael Hayes now trying to go set for the Bulldog. Here it comes. Bam! Got the Bulldog on Nightmare Ken Wayne. Goes for the pin. Count one. Count two. Wait a second. Dirty White Boy just yanked the referee. That would have been a three count right there. And the Dirty White Boy yanked the referee right out of the ring. Ray Gordy comes over and nails the Dirty White Boy on the outside of the ring. Well, here we go. Let's see what's going on inside the ring. Michael Hayes is bringing White right to left. Choking Nightmare Ken Wayne. Michael Hayes continues now pounding Nightmare Ken Wayne in the corner. Dirty White Boy from behind. Michael Hayes in trouble now. And he nailed him apparently with it. Did you see that? He had a chain. Dirty White Boy nailed. Uh, hit uh, Michael Hayes with a chain. Dirty White Boy now hiding that chain and now trying to appear Michael Hayes kicks out he kicks out he kicked out of it after the dirty white boy used the kick chain he still kicked out of the hold it shows that Michael Hayes came to Birmingham Alabama to win this match now Hayes now coming back up Nightmare Kid Wayne now moves back in now the double team again by the Nightmare and Dirty White Boy now they try for Whipping into the opposite corner, Michael Hayes comes over. Oh my, the big left hand, another left hand to Nightmare Ken Wayne. Off the top rope, Ray Gordy with a flying press, count of one, two, three. Well, there you see the winners at this tribute to Terry Pam, Pam Gordy, Michael P.S. Hayes, and Ray Gordy, the fabulous Freebirds. Surely the torch has been passed to Ray Gordy as the Freebirds, Michael Hayes, Ray Gordy, win it tonight over the Dirty White Boy and Nightmare Ken Wayne in this historic tribute to the fabulous Freebird, Terry Bam Bam Gordy. It has truly been one great night. Now Michael Hayes has some words. Kill the music. Kill the music. I got a special treat for Birmingham, Alabama. I asked a special guest to come out here and say hello to you guys. We in the WWF are waiting for him to get back like yesterday. Birmingham, Alabama. Please give it up for the man known as the game, Triple H.
a legend continue as I see Michael P.S. Hayes and I see Terry's son Ray get in that ring and let the legend of the Freebirds carry on. And I just want to let you know one thing. You call the game. Because as of now, Triple H has got the free birds back. And that you can count on. Very good, Triple H, the game, give it up. Terry Gordy, rest in peace. Terry would say, it 